Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. Welcome to the first in my series of videos on the Expert Sleepers FH2 Factotum, which was graciously sent to me by Signal Sound, along with two CV expanders. The FH2 really deserves its Factotum title. It's the mother of all MIDI to CV converters, packing an unreal amount of features. It has both USB-A and USB-C connectors, and a header for an optional MIDI DIN I.O. expander. It can power USB devices and act as both host and device. It's a fully configurable and expandable MIDI to CV converter for monophonic, polyphonic and MPE patches with programmable output smoothing. It can be an Euclidean rhythm generator and a clock generator and divider. The outputs can be set up as arpeggiators, LFOs and envelope generators. And it can be expanded from 8 to up to 64 outputs. There's an OLED display a button and an encoder for programming, but you can also configure it from your computer via a friendly app. There is onboard memory for storage of settings, configurations, presets, calibrations and microtonal scales. The outputs are illuminated, reflecting the output voltages, and it has two voltage inputs which can be used for CV to MIDI or clock input, as well as for auto calibration to external VCOs and even a tuner mode. In this first video, I'll take you through the process of setting it up as an MPE MIDI to CV converter to control a 4 voice subtractive modular patch with my instrument. Then I'll perform on the patch. In future installments, we'll check it out interfacing some cool iPad apps with the modular, such as Patterning 2 and Fugue Machine. We'll dive into its microtonal capabilities and more. So please hit like and subscribe and let's jump in. Okay, so let's set this up, right? So first I'm gonna open up my FH2 configurator app. There it is. And I'm gonna just position it and resize it. So when we see it nice and big on the screen. Now, first thing I'm gonna make sure it's connected to the FH2. So I've already connected the cable, the USB-C cable. And now I'm gonna make sure that the app is listening and sending to the FH2. So it looks like it's sending to FH2, but it's listening to the key lab. So we'll change that to FH2. Now I can make sure by sending a message to the FH2. And there you go. You get that message on the FH2 screen that confirms that you are indeed sending to it. And I can request the FH2 version here and that will show me that I'm listening to the FH2. Actually, it changed. Here we go. And that's version 1.8.1 .1 right here. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the very simplest way to configure this and it's actually very simple. So you have 16 MIDI to CV converters available and we're only gonna use one of them. Just make sure that you change from mono to MPE, right? And now over here, we want it to be four voices and we're keeping our base output number one and our MIDI channel number one, base gate, we'll leave it blank. And what happens is the MIDI channel number one will be the global MPE channel, which means it's actually going to send from channel two to channel five. So we'll set our last channel to channel five here. That way we leave channel one for global things. Now I have the FH2 plus two CV expanders. So that gives me a total of 24 outputs. So you divide 24 by four and you have six outputs available per voice, right? So I'm gonna take full advantage of that. I'm gonna use CV, gate, velocity. I'm gonna add an envelope so I don't have to have two envelopes on my system per voice. So I'll probably use this envelope for amplitude for the VCA and the gate will trigger an envelope that I will use for filtering. And I do want the aftertouch and I also want the Y axis, which is CC number 74 on the Lin instrument. Okay, now we want to prevent voice stealing. So that means if I hold a three note chord, I can play with the other hand a melody that won't steal a note from that three note chord. 
Uh, we'll leave round robin voice allocation. And we want the band range to be at least 12, could be 24 too, but 12 is good enough for me. It means I can do a 12 semitone glissando on my instrument, which for me is plenty. So this is it and we'll name it. We'll name this configuration Lin, just to keep it simple. And I think that's it. There's a lot of other things that I could have done. You know, I've done more complicated configurations here. I can even show my expanders and do specific things to them. This thing is unbelievably flexible. But for what I want to do right now, this is enough. I will have to set on the preset setting, and we don't have a preset application on the computer, so that will have to be done on board on the FH2. I'll set smoothing for the aftertouch and the Y axis. So that doesn't sound stepped, so that sounds fluid. That's gonna have to be done on board. So here we go, send to FH2, boom, configuration, Okay, now let's move over to the system and check and see if the configuration got loaded properly and start making the patch on the modular. All right. Now the configuration is here. It says config OK, right? And let's go to the configurations menu. Let's just check and see if the name came through. And there it is. The main button is how you go into menus the little button steps back. So let's go back to the configuration. We'll save this one, right? And we'll save it where it's, there's an empty slot. So I've already done a few tests here. Number three is empty. And it asks me if I'm sure, and I say yes. Now, there are a couple things that I still want to do. First of all, let's test it, right? So I have the instrument over here. And when I set put the per split settings I see that it's set to channel per note which is what you want for MPE and the view of the MIDI channels is set to per note channels right here and I've set channels two three four and five one becomes like the main global channel all right so let's have a look at how these LEDs light up here so we have CV gate velocity envelope pressure and Y axis in that order. So that should be how each voice is distributed. So this will be CV, gate, velocity, envelope, pressure, Y axis. Let's look at the smoothing. Number five and number six from each of my four voices. Press the button to go into the main menu. In presets, we should probably reset the preset first. And yes, I'm sure. Now edit preset and here's smoothing. In output smoothing, I can choose which output, right? And first I want output number five, and then I press the button and change down to the smoothing value. And here you have a value that can go all the way up 127, but we probably don't want that much smoothing. What I'd done before that worked well, that didn't give me too much of a slew, but also didn't make it sound stepped, was about 20. So, okay, so we want output five with a smoothing of 20. We go to output six and we do the same, 20. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So three and four from the first expander would be the next two that we want to do that to. So that would be nine, 10, 11, and 12. 11, smoothing of 20, and 12, smoothing 20 as well. So we count four more from here, one, two, three, four, and these two. We want 17 and 18 to be smooth as well. 23 and 24 would be the last ones. Okay, now we need to save this preset. Actually, we should name it first. So name the preset and we'll name it the same thing because we want it to go along with our configuration. So it says init, we have to kind of delete that init. So now I can just write Lin with a capital L and that's it. Now we go back and go to save preset. Let's save it on three, just so it matches. So now in uh, settings, general settings, we can set a startup preset and we can choose it to be Lin. And we want startup configuration to be Lin as well. If the synthesizer gets turned off and then back on again, it'll automatically load that preset and that configuration and we'll be all set. Let's make up the patch. I've already started patching up a four voice polyphonic patch 
but I need to finish configuring it because I, I was waiting to see what the outputs were going to be like on the FH2. So let's do that and we'll come back and start testing and see how well this works. Okay, so here's the patch, and I made it with tendrils cables that I just got from Australia. They're awesome. They really help tame the spaghetti monster quite a bit. And the case is totally closable patched now, which was sort of iffy when I was using normal straight cables. These are very skinny and right angled, so nice. So anyway, I've patched all of the outputs from my FH2 and expander, and basically each voice, the CV is going to a different oscillator. So I've got uh, the two even VCOs. Then I've got the product oscillator. And then up here where you can't see it, there's the uh, Electrosmith 3340 analog VCO. So those are my four oscillators. And then each oscillator is going through a filter. The Bifacos are going through the Electrosmith 2144 and the Schlob modular state variable filter. The product is going through its own filter and the 3340 VCO is going through the Erica Synths Multimode VCF. And then each filter is going into one VCA here and I have two Magella VVCAs. So these VCAs are velocity VCAs. They have a velocity input as well as the regular CV input. Since I have two of them and they're dual, I have four channels right here. So each one is getting the signal from one of the filters. Then each one is getting the CV from the corresponding envelope generator output from the FH2 combo and also the velocity output. So the velocity output is going into the velocity inputs and the envelope generator outputs are going into the CV inputs. And then all four outputs are going into four channels of the hex mix over here. I have three effects in the sense there. So I have delay, I have the clouds, which you can't see. It's my monsoon, just basically as a reverb and the spring reverb, the Bifaco spring reverb as well. So that's a lot of effects making it sound really epic. And the other thing is all four gates from the FH2 are going into the trigger inputs of ornament and crime in peaked mode, which is the envelope generator mode. The y-axis outputs from the FH2 are going into the CV inputs here of the ornament and crime, and they are affecting the envelope decay time. So my vertical position on each pad is changing the decay time of the envelope and these four envelopes are going into the filters. And also I'm mixing in the pressure, the aftertouch outputs from the FH2 are also affecting the cutoff of the filters. So the filters are receiving two modulation sources each. They're receiving an envelope from the ornament and crime and the pressure output from the FH2 here. So basically I'm using all six outputs per voice from the FH2 here. These are very simple voices. They're just traditional standard subtractive voices. Every oscillator is in sawtooth mode, so it sounds kind of brassy and sounds really nice. Here, let me redirect the camera here so that you can see the instrument as well and I'll give you a little preview. <laughs> So in order to make it sound perfectly in tune, I'm going to run the auto calibrate procedure on the four oscillators and I'm going to save that on the FH2 and then I can turn this patch on and off anytime I want to and uh, after a little bit of warm up time for the oscillators to stabilize, I should be able to just use this patch for a while if I want to. I think that's it. So let's calibrate these oscillators. Okay, so the way the calibration works is you have two inputs on the FH2. 
We haven't used them so far. But we will use the X input to come back from the oscillator, one oscillator at a time, with any of its other waves. So I can use a triangle or a square wave, any wave that's not already patched to come back to the X input. So we'll start with the first even VCO here and I'll take, uh, I'll take the square wave from it, All right? Now we'll go to calibration, auto calibrate, and we choose which output. Now the first output is the CV output for the first oscillator, so we don't have to do anything. So I'm just gonna click on go here. And there it goes. So I can choose to accept it and I say, yes, I accept it. Now let's do it again. So. We'll go to calibrate. We have a voice at each six uh, outputs. So we'll change that to seven and patch the output there. Go. And there it goes. We accept that. Now seven plus six is 13. Now we have to change this again and we'll pick up the pulse output from the product and we'll press go and there it goes okay and then the last one's 13 plus 6 that's 19 right we'll accept this the square wave output of the 3340 barely makes it we'll come down to go and calibrate that. Cool. So now all four oscillators are auto calibrated. So the outputs are calibrated to the oscillators. So if there is any error in the calibration of the oscillators that is compensated by the outputs themselves. Now I can save those. Let's go to calibration. save calibration and we'll save each one Are you sure yes and now we'll go back to calibration we'll save save calibration we'll go to 13 save calibration 2 yes calibrations again save calibration for out 7 for the number 3 and yes I'm sure Again, calibration, save calibration, output one, and that'll be number four. Are you sure? Yes. So those calibrations are saved and I can pull them back if I need to. I just have to remember they're in reverse order. So 19, 13, seven, and one. So cool, I think I'm ready to rock with this thing. So I'm gonna perform now on it and provide something cool.
I hope you liked this video. Stay tuned for the next installment coming soon. And if you join my Patreon, you can help me continue creating cool content. Deluxe patrons get access to the audio files from my demos and their names on this list. See you soon and stay noisy.